This is part two of my Capture One 22 benchmark on the M1 Pro and M1 Max. And for this one, I'll be comparing the performance for Capture One 22 versus Capture One 21 on a lot of the Mac machines to see if there's any improvement, any optimization we can see beyond just pretty much the new features in Capture One 22. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This is feature art with a quick update and acknowledgement. If you have watched part one, Capture One 22 benchmark, one of the more common feedback that I have received is that the graph does not represent the machine performance or the timing really well, and I totally acknowledge that. Here's my promise to you. I will try my best to improve those in a future video, the one that I have not filmed yet. There are a few videos that I already have filmed in my archive that I have to edit out. So in the next two or three weeks, we may be dealing with graphs that may not be the best represented but we're going to try to improve this going forward. It is a lot of work gathering a data between all these machines running all these tests, and it is definitely time consuming. So the data gathering part, I can tell you is definitely precise. And any intricacies that I found during the testing is also the reason why I analyze all these graphs for you so that you can see exactly and know what I'm going through when I'm running these tests, if any weird things do come up. And that's also the reason why I encourage you to pause these graphs and also look at the timing for yourself so that you can do your own analysis. But for now, I'm going to hand you back to the video and you can continue to see the Capture One 21 versus 22 result on multiple of these Intel machines. I'll be sharing a lot of information and analysis. I'll leave timestamp in the description below so you can skip ahead the result if you like. Also, feel free to pause the slide at the result screen so you can see and analyze the result yourself a little bit further too. Let's take a look at the test and reference system. I have amassed a large amount of the M1 Pros and M1 Max computer in both the 14 and 16 inch configuration. Not all of these machines are my own. Some of them I have borrowed time in the machine from my friend's computer. So that really helps out a lot in running all these tests because these represent a large amount of investment if I have to own every single one of them. But for this, I have a pretty good representation for the Apple SoCi that are available, particularly in the GPU because Capture One tends to use a lot of those. So I have the 14, 16, 24 and 32 GPU to run the test. And regarding memory, I have 16, 32 in both the Pro and the Max and 64 gigabyte. That's part of these tests. So we're gonna be able to see the result to all of this. The other test that I'm also going to throw in as well is on the Intel machines. So on the Mac Pro and the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro and on the M1 machines. The Intel and the M1s, interestingly enough, sits at the opposite end of the spectrum for pricing meaning that the Intel machine that I have, these two represents like the top pricing machine and supposedly they were the top performance machine back in 2019 when they were released. And these M1s were from 2020 and they represent the opposite end. These are more the value machine from Apple, meaning they're priced really well and on the lower end of Apple product, which makes them an amazing performer. But in all of these tests, I've also found out a few surprises if you have watched my first part of the video, you probably already found out that 24 core does really well, much better than the 32 core in the system. I mean, it's not much better, but the improvement that you're going to get going from 24 to 32 core is pretty much very minimal. I'm gonna share that chart with you again here too, but there are some other interesting things that do come up in these tests that I will share as well. So let's start out with the result for a Capture One 21 versus 22 on the import test. This is 1000 Nikon D850 file, and this just gives us a good indicator as how the program would perform and work through everything. And I have Capture One rendering 5,120 pixel preview, so it's using quite a bit of the CPU resources on the system. As far as we can tell from this chart, we can see that there are some time differences. The graph is shorter, which is a good thing, but it's really not by much. We're really talking in the seconds. All of these are generally less than a minute faster. So are we seeing improvement in the way how the program is using the CPU? I would say yes, but relatively very small. So this probably means that Capture One 22 probably gone in and optimized some of the code to use the CPU a little bit better better utilizing a system resources, but still not fully optimized for any of these M1 Pros, M1 Max just yet. And this is pretty much the result we're seeing throughout. So if we take a look at this now, and we're gonna put in the Intel and the M1 machine into the Max, we can see that these M1 Pros and M1 Max are amazing performers. They're still sitting at the very top on both of these charts, 
with the M1s and the Intel machine falling there at the bottom, as you can see. If we take a look at the result from the Intel machine a little bit closer, there are some interesting things that we're going to find. For instance, in the Mac Pro, the utilization of the CPU is much better. We're seeing a five minutes time improvement. I would consider that significant enough. It's not the marginal within under a minute or anything like that as what we're seeing before. So we're seeing good improvement there. As far as the Mac Mini, we're seeing about close to a minute, not that big of a difference whatsoever. MacBook Air, amazingly enough in my test, I would call this margin of error, but this one is two seconds faster than Capture 122, which is rather interesting. And we're getting some time improvement on the 2019 inch MacBook Pro. But for that one, we're really not seeing that significant of an improvement whatsoever. I would probably say less than 45 seconds, which is eh, not that big of a deal. For Capture 122 export, if we take a look at both of these machines, we're seeing something that's being repeated as what I've shared with you before is that the M1 Max have a tendency to do better than the M1 Pro. And that is because there are more GPUs and Capture One does definitely use a GPU in rendering a preview when you're editing the images. And also it uses GPU predominantly when it's doing the export of your images. And the result is as what we can see here. Although there are some interesting things that we can glean from this chart. Let's start out with looking at the Max first. So we just take a look at the max performance in general. What we see is something rather interesting. As I mentioned already before, this was a big surprise on the 14 inch 24 GPU. This is the one that a lot of people have been saying that the GPU speed on this processor have been throttled down compared to the 16 inch one. And with this is still performing literally within a minute, less than a minute of the 32 core on the 16 inch the 32 GPU on the 16 inch machine as you see right now. So what this is really telling us is that just go for the 24 core GPU. There's no point getting the 32 core to run the M1 machines. And the other thing is you may ask, well, what happened if Capture One decided in the future they're going to really optimize it so that the performance on the 32 core is better? Well, until that really happens, I don't think that spending 200 extra dollars is definitely worth it. And the other thing too is that if you're just not only using Capture One, but you're using any other photo apps. Most of the photo apps out there are not really designed to utilize the GPU core heavily. Most of them are still utilizing the CPU core heavily. So Capture One is probably one of the few exceptions and there may be a few other ones out there. But if you look at the Adobe Suite, if you look at Photoshop, most of the time, the GPU core that already are in the system would work fine for what you really need it to do. Interestingly enough, when we compare the result for Capture One 22 and 21, we do get the improvement in time, but on the export part, we're pretty much not getting that big of an improvement on the 24 core GPU system. So interestingly enough too, the 24 core GPU when tested in Capture One 21 under the exact same OS and condition and everything, it's performing faster than the 32 core GPU. So that's another interesting thing to note about this chart. Let's go back and have a look at this one more time. We're seeing pretty much the same effect being spread out on the Pro machines that the base 14 Pro with eight CPU, 14 GPU one is taking a little bit longer because there are less GPU core in the system. And if you take a look at the chart, one more thing that you can get out of this is that the amount of memory on the system doesn't really matter because otherwise the 16 gigabyte model would not sit in the middle where it is right now it would sit at the very bottom, but that's not the case. So if you just run capture one as a singular program, 16 gigabyte would do, but my recommendation for pros, especially if we use these computers to process a lot of images, just get 32. Ultimately this comes down to your computing habits, but if you run multiple apps, and if you have Capture One and Photoshop open, you may have some web browsing and email open. I would just definitely get 32 because that's going to help out with the machine in the long run, especially if you link this up to multiple displays. Let's add in the M1 and also the Intel machine into the mix. We can see a lot of results here, and this is something that you might want to pause to view, but I'm just gonna zoom in on the Intel machine result. And I run this test multiple times, which I find rather interesting and this is verified to be using the gpu for export the mac pro results still the fastest out of this group but what really surprised me is that the max pro export took much longer 28 minutes and 45 seconds compared to 60 minutes and 11 seconds and i ran this test multiple times between these two versions and 
I'm still getting results that are the same. So something have happened where it's no longer really fully optimized very well on the Radeon Pro Vega 2 uh, video card that is in my Mac anymore. So that's rather interesting. On the MacBook Pro, we do see some time improvement by around like two, three minutes or so. That's pretty good. As far as the M1 machine, the MacBook Air and also the Mac Mini, they are pretty much about the same, just slightly faster by one of those seconds differences. So not really that big of a deal. So this all comes down to optimization. As much as the process are running native on the system, we're still not seeing the optimization in Capture One to really go in and utilize it the resources on these machines as much as it can. It is really going in there and using, for example, the CPU to render, but let me put it this way. If you use Lightroom Classic, the render time for these files to generate one-to-one -one preview is usually around, I would probably say 20 minutes or so. So it's still much faster than Capture One and Lightroom utilizes the CPU on the system much more than Capture One does. And I'm sure that Capture One wants this to be the way how they design the program so you can really go in and start to edit your pictures really quickly without having the system being bogged down by the CPU usage for rendering. But I just feel that we need to bump this up a little bit more and have a slightly faster rendering preview time, especially for the initial import so that the program has that and it can load it a little bit faster. As far as GPU configuration, you already found out that the 24 GPU tends to work really well and I would just personally save $200 in doing that. So if you ask me, configuring these machines, the M1 Pro, M1 Max for Capture One, I would just look at the GPU solely and not so much the CPU when you're really looking at which SOC to choose. So with GPU, if we take a look at result right now, you can see that this is within about less than 45 seconds of this and this one is not even I would say a minute faster than the 24 core. So getting the 32 core GPU doesn't really make too big of a difference. This accounts for a $200 difference in price. And I would probably just go with a 24 GPU and just call that the day. So if you're configuring the 14, that will be the one that you want to choose is the one that I have highlighted right now. And if you're choosing the 16 inch model, I would just go with the mid tier processor and just don't worry about it. There may be some optimization that happens down the road, but you should configure the machine for the way how the software is going to perform today. And if you have a use for a 32 core GPU, don't let me stop you from getting those. But, you know, we may not see that big of an improvement. The other thing that I also found out is that these 24 GPU versions are really hard to find at the retail store. Most of the time, you're only going to be able to get this from Apple. So if you want to get it from another place other than Apple, you may just be better off with a 32 GPU version. So those are a couple things to think about. As far as memory in the system, we talked about this a little bit already. There's not that big of a difference whatsoever between the amount of RAM in the system, 16 versus 32 versus 64. You're really not going to see that big jump going from 32 to 64. And the only task that you may see some jump in RAM is when you're doing the panorama merge, for instance. But for that, you'll see a much bigger jump going from 16 to 32. And when you go from 32 to 64, there is pretty much no differences whatsoever. So I would probably recommend the 32 gigabyte configuration for pros just because that makes a lot of sense. And if you take a look at right now on the chart, we can see that you do get that performance bump by like 12 seconds. And when we do the panoramic merge, you may wonder like, hey, how come this machine with 32 gigabytes of memory fall at the end? Well, this is the one with less high performance and also less GPU core in the system. So this is the 14 base, which does take a little bit longer to do. I mean, beyond that, all these four machines with 32 and 64 gigabytes, they're really close to each other that it's not going to make too big of a difference. So recommendation for Pro, go with 32, just because chances are you may not be running Capture One as a singular program. If you are, you may be linking it to multiple displays and giving your system GPU more of that unified memory for it to use for it to render preview. It's going to definitely help out in the long run. That's the reason why Apple have released these machines. So we have access to a larger pool of memory. Because let me be totally honest with you, if you are going to configure these M1 Pros and M1 Max with 16 gigabytes of memory, you're probably better off just getting the MacBook Pro 13 inch one or the MacBook Air, which is the Mac mini, and just cap it off at 16 gigabytes because you're not going to see that huge of a difference most of the time. All right, with that said, this is the comparison between Capture One 21 and 22. Hopefully down the road, we'll get more performance 
and more optimization from Capture One, but that's something that we're gonna have to see down the road. If they do that, I'll probably release another benchmark video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you're new. And remember, you not retrust. Really